We've already run our supply and return lines from the attic space down in here to the mechanical room. Oh, so it looks like this stainless steel, that's great, and they're already insulated. And so it's one piece, no fittings inside that chase. That's correct, that's no correct. fittings. All right, so what else you got to do? Well, next thing for us is to remove the, the two existing tanks. With the gas shut off, now we want to drain the water heaters. With the water heaters drained, we can now cut the pipes and remove them. Now, Richard, this is one of the two solar collectors that we'll be putting up on the roof. All right, so Chuck, you can see right here that there's a connection right here that's going to have antifreeze going through it. It's called propylene glycol, just a fancy name for antifreeze. Well, that's good because it's going to freeze here in the wintertime. That's right. It's going to help in the freeze in the winter, but also in the summer, this liquid gets so hot that it was just plain water could turn to steam. Now, if you look at this, this is a cutaway of an inside of a solar collector. There's a header right here. That's a, a pipe, a copper pipe. That's where the antifreeze is going to pass through. You can see right here, there's a copper sheet with a special coating on the top. Below it is insulation. When the sun hits that collector sheet, it's going to heat up that liquid. If I turn it this way, you can see there are small tubes right here. They're going to pass through the collector. Now, the way the antifreeze passes inside the collector is this. As it comes in, it comes up through those small tubes. It comes up to a header right here, and now it passes down through the other half, and it goes into the second collector up on the roof. Oh, great. All right, we ready to go? Okay, we're ready to go. But first, with this style of collector, we have to remove some of the roof shingles. We have to go right down to the tar paper. That's where we'll mount the collector. And luckily, the tar paper looks good. Good. Here's our second panel. Drop it. I'm going to drop it. Got it? Yeah, there you go. Good. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut three holes in the roof. First hole is here for the supply of the glycol from the basement to the collector. Yeah. Our second hole here connects the first collector to the second collector. Yep. Comes from that other next one, yep. Right. Third hole is going to be here. We're going to take the return of the glycol back down to the Great. Base. And the loop is complete. All right. Correct. All right, here it comes to you. Great. Now we screw the collector flange into the rafters. Any solar system needs to know when the sun is actually out. So for that, we have a temperature sensor that will mount right here. Once that temperature sensor is in there, if the sun hits this collector, it heats up the glycol, and it tells the pump to come on down in the basement. Now we're ready for our first connection, the supply up from the basement. This is actually a stainless steel corrugated pipe with insulation on the outside, and it's a solderless connection. You don't need to solder it at all. You can see there's a compression nut right there, and we just tighten it up, and it makes for a perfect high-pressure connection. To make the connections panel to panel, they make a short piece of the corrugated pipe with union connections. And those connections are just the same as the supply pipe. All right, so the return line's connected, right? That's so right. now, with that done, we've got all of our mechanical connections done and our thermostat sensor. We can actually head to the basement, right? We can. I'm going to leave a couple guys up here to make sure that we're all watertight. Good. We can go down and check it. So while we've been up on the roof, my guys have been busy here in the mechanical room. Boy, they sure have. Look, it looks great. They have wow, been busy. Wow, what a change. All right, well, let me take you through your solar system. You remember these flexible lines that connect up to the panels up on the roof? That's going to go up to the collectors and then back. The hardest part of many of these jobs is to find a way to fish these through the building. So Bob's crew found a place right here next to this flue pipe up through the building. So that's great. Now, they work their way right down to this. This is called a pumping station. You can see a circulator pump right here. You can see a control right here, a couple of temperature gauges. Out of the bottom, there's two more flexible lines, and that comes out of that pumping station and works its way right over to here to this water heater. So the glycol, or the antifreeze, will actually come into this coil. Now, inside this tank is a big coil that's filled with that glycol, and it's going to heat up the water. The tank itself is filled with water, ready to go for the faucets. So imagine a sunny day. Collectors feel that temperature, bring the pump on, it might go up and get so much temperature, it might come back, and this water tank might get to be 170, 180, 200, too much to come out of the faucets. So what I like seeing is this. This is a safety device called a tempering valve. The hot water from the tank will mix with cold water right here to give a mixed temperature out to the faucet that is consistent. I like seeing that temperature gauge, too. Now, i got to tell you, the sun doesn't always shine at night or on cloudy days. And so for that, there's a gas backup right here. They've already run their gas piping to connect that. They still have a little bit of venting work to do for both the furnace and the water heater. But after that, you're going to have a solar system with a gas backup and plenty of hot water. That sounds great. Mm -hmm.